basically Brad keeps them pretty busy during the day. Um, it's breakfast in the morning and pretty much whenever the last person gets up then kind of is when breakfast will get served and then after that it's usually the morning excursion. They're off in the dinghy to do something and then um, come back for lunch and um, it could be we could have moved the boat to another place, another location and uh, then it's lunch and then it's cookies after lunch and then it's usually another excursion. Brad keeps them pretty busy during the day um, from morning till lights go out and so most times the guests are pretty exhausted and uh, not quite as up at late as they think they might be because between the sun and the sand and the surf and all the fun activities are they're pretty wiped and then in the evening times after dinner we'll find guests like to play games or sometimes you'll have guests that enjoy reading um, it just kind of depends on what what they enjoy doing and um, some like to dance and have the music going we have a wonderful playlist that will play just about anything you would like to hear and um, we have speakers all over the boat so you can be up on the foredeck you can be back here in the cockpit area and have music in your rooms we've got the direct tv we've also got a, a huge selection of movies um, if there happens to be rainy days and people want to catch a movie I have a basic menu that I keep on line that is kind of an overall what you might expect when you come and then I tweak it as I get the preference sheets coming in. So generally there's going to be, you know, fish dishes, there's going to be mahi, there's going to be ahi tuna, there's going to be beef tenderloin, there's going to be um, a shrimp dish. If people love pasta, I have a, a quite an arrangement of pasta dishes I could do. Um, then dessert every night. Oh yeah, we have snack baskets and bags, with just about everything. So at any point during the day, if anybody's hungry, there's always something they can grab. And usually always a fruit basket with apples, oranges, bananas. So at, there should never be a point when anyone's hungry. <laughs> there's food everywhere. This is a really nice way to, to get the families back together. Um, but really, basically, um, all lives, all walks of life. They really enjoy coming on the boat and you know, disconnecting from your everyday you know, grind that we do. I mean, uh, you know, um, these, these, they, they enjoy it. We, we give them um, just fun days filled with excitement and new sights that they've never seen. And uh, being it's the ocean, you know, we, there's they've, a lot of people have never really been on the ocean. And, um, and we're in a protected area. Um, you know, we try to keep it um, fast moving and fun. But on the other hand, you know, if, if they want to slow way down, they can slow way down. We can park it wherever they want to park it in front of a nice sand atoll and, and just hang out and play on the beach toys and, and the water toys that we have on the boat, which, you know, um, wakeboards. Um, you know, surfboards, we do wake surfing and um, paddle boards and snorkeling and just fun things that we see. You know, you see things underwater that uh, normally you wouldn't even see, but it's fun. We jump into the water, um, we do long excursions during the day, we'll jump in the dinghy, we take everybody in the boat, or if the parents want to stay behind and let the kids go, we'll take them. We'll ta I take the kids, I love the kids, um, I have my own kids. Uh, uh, that'll come down to the boat occasionally. They're grown, but um, but we take them and 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 we will do whatever the kids want to do. Mostly hikes. Uh, you know the iguanas are around, the swimming pigs are around, the fun things that that uh, you want to see. You know things that you don't see in your everyday life. You'll see here.
A lot of the guys that come on the boat, uh, they want to know about the mechanical systems, what type of engines we have, um, you know, how big a generator do we have and stuff like that. So we have a 20 kW generator that produces power enough to uh, run everything on the boat. We have a huge battery banks. So we carry 12 house batteries. Um, the engines are, the main engines are a uh, 100 horsepower turbocharged Yanmars that uh, propel the boat at about, our cruising speed is about nine knots. So um, if you've ever cruised on a boat, uh, you know that most boats run about five or six knots um, at best. And so uh, at nine knots, we cover a lot of area very quickly. So, um, or in a reasonable amount of time. Now, granted, the wind and waves can, can knock you back a little bit on those timelines. But um, for the most part, um, our mechanical systems on the boat, we have a, a, a huge water maker. We make 60 gallons an hour of fresh water from the ocean with our reverse osmosis system on the boat. So um, showers, the guests love, you know, fresh water is something that guests love the most, uh, you know, and so there's plenty of that to go around, you know, um, usually we see people taking two and three showers a day uh, and then rinsing off every time they come out of the ocean. The ocean is, is um, quite abrasive on people, just the salt and, and that. So um, we like to, you know, people like to stay out of the salt and we, we get that plenty there. Um, the dinghy has a 60 horse, plenty of water skiing, uh, you know, wakeboarding, power to, to, uh, to go on our excursions. Um, other than that, mm, sound we have, all new. yeah, we have a brand new sound system. We put on all kinds of, uh, neat equipment, uh, um, for that, you know, as far as like Shanna mentioned earlier, the direct TV, uh, the Sirius satellite radio, if you don't have a playlist or if you, you know, got in a hurry and didn't have time to download your playlist. We have that now, um, hundreds or thousands of songs, thousands of, thousands of movies. If they, you know, if it's a rainy day, sometimes it rains out here and we, you know, there's not always the sun. Um, and, and so, you know, nobody likes to stand around out in the rain. So, um, the, you know, we have that opportunity to watch a, a neat movie or something like that, that, that takes up just a little bit of time, maybe an hour or two that, that, uh, that it might rain out here. And usually that's all it really does rain. It's just for a couple of hours and then it clears out, it blows right through. And we also have the, the Wi-Fi. Yeah. The Wi-Fi. Wi so people can, they're wanting to disconnect, but if they need to check emails from work, that's available for the most part throughout the Bahamas, but there are gonna be a few places where it's gonna be a day or two where, before you might get it. But it is available at the beginning and the end and not always in between. So as far as um, packing for the, for the trip, if you're planning on coming for a, a seven night, eight day charter, um, we usually recommend that you guys pack really light. Um, soft sided suitcase or collapsible bag. Um, you're basically in your swimsuits and cover ups and guys and your trunks and a t-shirt. And you know, if you choose to go out for dinner a couple of times, there are a few places we could do that. But again, everything is very low key. You don't need to have, you know, just a sundress or even shorts. Everything goes kind of down here. And then as far as packing, if you choose to not check any bags, all your shampoos, conditioners, body wash, sunscreen, bug spray, lotion, toothpaste, toothbrushes, everything, face um, makeup wipes. Um, we have everything that you could possibly want. I mean, you can bring your little three ounce containers of your special stuff that you can carry with you, but to avoid all that, you don't have to pack any shampoos unless you have certain conditions that you need to, to follow. But other than that, we can, uh, we can pretty much have you covered when you get on the boat. And dry bags, you know, um, we have dry bags for your phones, um, those kinds of things, you know, because everybody likes to take pictures of, of what's going on around them. So we have the dry bags that, that help that, you know, in the dinghy and the chargers and stuff, you know, you don't need to worry about your chargers. Um, we are a high voltage boat, but uh, uh, most every cell phone charging base station um, can go from 100 to 240 volts. So that's important um, to know that before you get on the boat, because everybody has that question. How am I going to charge up my camera? How am I going to charge up my phone? That's important um, to know that they can just plug into the boat. And there's, there's never an issue with, with power. Um, 
we have adapters, we have inverters and converters and all kinds of fun things so that uh, we can adapt to get those, those things charged up if they need it, so. The biggest review we get on Brad is just how knowledgeable he is about sailing, about the boat, about the mechanics of the boat. Um, his wealth of knowledge is just like, it's people are in awe because he's just very good at what he's doing. <laughs> and he's very confident and, it, and that shows, I think, to the guests, they feel very safe, they feel um, you know, he's cautious, he's, he's always um, good at looking at um, what to expect. You know, he'll get up, he knows where the wind's coming from, where the waves, how, how that's going to affect what we're doing for the day. So uh, people really are, um, I think, grateful to have a captain that, that knows so much about what's going on around him and on the boat itself. And then plus he's just um, a ball of energy. I mean, he, I don't think too many guests can actually keep up with him because it's like, get in the boat, get in the dinghy. We're on our next adventure. <laughs> they jump up and there they go. So they love him. Oh, Shanna gets raves, rave reviews. Um, the, the cooking, you know, I mean, that's what she does. Um, very, you know, she's pretty good with the boat too, but the food is, is what the raves come about because, um, you know, there's there's people that will say, you know, oh my gosh, this is five star. We've never eaten so well. Um, you know, um, they gained five pounds on this trip, and they didn't want to. And we thought, you know, we just didn't realize how good the food was going to be on a boat coming out of a galley that's small. It's a small galley, and uh, um, n not that we can't cook a 12 pound turkey if we have to, but um, but it's small counter spaces and stuff like that. And the food that she she prepares in that galley space is un unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, she does a really good job with me, especially because she has she has a couple of different hats that that, that she wears. And uh, you know whether we're anchoring or coming into a dock, she's moving the 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 fenders around and and you know catching lines and and uh, you know tacking the boat as we sail. Um, a lot of people are a little intimidated about the size of the boat even if they've sailed before they haven't sailed this type of boat before so Shanna um, definitely knows the boat really well now we've we've sailed thousands of miles in this boat into the North Atlantic and back and and oh uh, and she's learned a lot in the past few years so um, they they actually compliment her on that too you know as we as we're sailing along so I've been sailing since I was seven, and uh, and Dad put me in the Ventura Yacht Club as a little boy, uh, kind of like as in daycare, and so I grew up sailing on little tiny Sabbath boats, and uh, and as the years progressed, you know, um, on and off sailed, and then um, fortunate enough, I, I basically built my own little boats, little radio-controlled boats, 
and there was a boat down the street that had been sitting on the street for a, quite a few months. And I went up to the guy that owned the boat and I asked him, you know, how much do you want for your boat, you know? And he said, uh, oh, I don't know. And he opened his garage door and, uh, and I saw a bunch of radio controlled boats and airplanes and everything. And, his, and so um, I said, hey, I've got a really nice catamaran that I built uh, radio controlled. And he was, he was really impressed. And so I showed it to him and he goes, let's just trade straight across. You can have this old boat. So I took that old boat. It was a 21 foot boat and, uh, and fixed it up, put some new bottom paint on it and threw it in the water and started sailing there, that boat. Um, and then I traded up to a, a larger boat, a 35 foot boat, and basically same kind of deal. Uh, talked to the guy about his boat, saw it, it was a little tore up, went down to Portland, Oregon, and, uh, and got that boat from him by trading the other boat. So I just have been continually trading up. So that's kind of the same thing as in this charter business is we've traded up to bigger boats all the way along. So it's been fun. <laughs> My background is um, growing up in the lakes of Michigan and uh, motorboating. I had small children that grew up on uh, wakeboard boats and really never sailed. But then fast forward quite a few years, I'm in New Mexico. I take a job down there and within two weeks of being in New Mexico, I meet Brad. and. Probably about a couple weeks later, no, actually it was a couple months later, he took me sailing on his 35-foot boat down in San Diego for a weekend. And after that, we sat on the beach and thought, boy, this is, this is great. We need to do this. And so then about a month and a half later, we were looking at boats online and found a boat. We went out and took a look at it. And within a month, we were packing our bags and moving to the boat in Mystic, Connecticut. And then from there, we took a couple years to sail the boat that we had purchased together. And we sailed it all the way down to the um, Grenada and then kind of got back up towards the Virgin Islands where our two year hiatus kind of became to an end and then it was time to go back to work. And then that's where we kind of met the, the company, um, the couple who owned Charter House and they kind of um, asked if we would be interested in, in chartering one of their boats. And that's then when we started on Elixir and then we worked our way up to Delphine. And here we are.